Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Uh, good afternoon, <laughs> should say. It is the Earth Master back here on this Friday, April 28th, 2023. It's about 10.55 a.m. here along the West Coast, so technically still morning. Beautiful day out here on this uh, April 28th day. 2023, goodness. It's supposed to be about 97 degrees here along the West Coast. Latest earthquake shows a 2.0. Uh, into the region of Alaska, we have been seeing uh, well, we've been seeing quite a bit of activity ramping up here globally, including down into the Southern California area. So let's go ahead and pull up the latest information here on the USGS map as we zoom into the uh, Southern California area, just off of the Imperial Fault, which is uh, uh, just south of the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is just south of the san andreas fault so very close here to the plate boundary seeing a little swarming of earthquake activity uh, around the mexicali area and just north of the border got about 22 earthquakes listed up here on the map and uh, the swarm kind of kicked up looks like uh, late last night so far we've seen a 3.1 that's going to be the largest magnitude out here um, in that mix of earthquake activity so kind of watching that, a uh, little bit of uh, variables here in the depth of the earthquakes, which could indicate here a little bit of movement uh, about ready to take place along this fault system. We'll continue to watch this. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of activity further north as well, near the Ocotello Wells area uh, from yesterday. That was a 3.2. Uh, also a little bit of activity up along the San Jacinto Fault Zone here within the last hour with a 1.4 so watch this area today into the uh, southern california and the baja uh, area northern california not a whole lot going on up here we got a little scattered activity most of this was from yesterday and i believe this is in association with the uh, cascadia uh, trimmer activity let's pull up the trimmer map here from yesterday you can see a little bit of uh, trimmer activity here into extreme northern California. That's down dip into the Cascadia subduction zone here, about 35, 45 kilometers deep. That could be uh, some of the effects that we're seeing uh, upstream towards the surface. Although we got one uh, yeah, close there to the trimmer area, about 33 kilometers deep. Either way, just some small microquake activity on a little bit of a um, from yesterday's time frame. All right, uh, up north into the Princeton, Canada area. This is outside Vancouver region, 3.4, 5.4 kilometers deep there. Uh, over into the Yellowstone region, not a whole lot showing up here on the map, but we are going to double check that, see what's going on here across the area. Uh, definitely not a whole lot of activity here today. Did see some movement um, yesterday, but... Uh, or late last night, I should say. But overall, things right now, this morning and this afternoon, looks fairly calm across the Yellowstone area. Uh, further south and east here, across the Texas area, uh, did see some movement here from uh, yesterday around the oil fields there in uh, the Pecos, Texas area. Getting a little activity across the New Madrid seismic zone here with um, well, at least four earthquakes here. Some of those from yesterday. Actually, it looks like all of these are from yesterday. I don't remember these being up on the map um, in the update last night, but it looks like there's a little bit of activity kicking up here. And up further to the northeast, eastern... Uh, they call this eastern Kentucky over here. 2.2, 15 kilometers deep there. All right, uh, looking around the... Caribbean plate. We're going to pull up the earthquake 3D map here to get a little bit better perspective. Uh, a, lot, a lot of this activity here from early uh, last night. Not a whole lot of newer movement there on the globe. But uh, we did see a little bit of activity in the early morning hours, including a 4.4. Uh, Just into the Guatemala area. Looks like about 69 or 67 kilometers deep here into the Middle America Trench. Uh, further down south into the South America region, one earthquake showing up, but um, there's definitely quite a bit more. Got some twos kicking up there in the mix of the Peru Chile Trench. All right, let's go check out New Zealand, which is now added here on the map 
far as uh, seismograph activity or uh, yeah, seismic activity. That's going to show some of the smaller quakes being reported by the GeoNet servers as well uh, from uh, a couple days ago. Uh, the big picture, well, let's double check the GeoNet folks here real quick. See what's being reported. Looks like uh, still seeing some activity down here in or up into the North Island, New Zealand area. Uh, quite a few ones. Some unnoticed earthquakes as well. Doesn't look like there's anything major popping off so far today. Uh, quick glance at the earthquake drums here. We'll confirm that. Uh, there's the activity showing up pretty prominently across the seismograph stations from Fiji last night. Uh, seen a pretty good series of uh, earthquakes there. But as far as local seismic activity at the New Zealand region, I'm really not seeing too much activity currently taking place. Uh, of course, all the activity. The excitement has been up north here into the Fiji area. South of Fiji, I should say, into a portion that looks like the northern end of, of the Kermadec Trench. If you want to get specific, right around the, uh, looks like the South Fiji Basin area, or just north of that area. See what we got uh, so far. Of course, last night, 6.6. .6. There was a 6.2 up here. Looks like they downgraded that to a 6.0. Uh, that earthquake occurring literally seconds before the 6.6, .6, so... Definitely a lot of strain here. This is a major accumulator of a uh, slip rate and a lot of pressure here in this region. We did see quite a few fives and some fours following that movement yesterday. Either way, some deep activity kicking up. Uh, starting to see a little adjustment here to the north uh, near the Vanuatu area, 138 kilometers for a 4.6. That's gonna be the latest earthquake here in this area. Uh, but I think we still need to watch regions upstream and uh, New Zealand still should be uh, in that watch area as well considering all this movement from yesterday. Um, let's see here what else we got across the Papua New Guinea area. A little scattered activity here. Some fours, threes. It looks like there was a uh, older 5.7 early this morning. About 10 kilometers deep. Up north, a little bit more active across the Philippine plate uh, with a, uh, looks like a 4.0 or, yeah, we got a 5.1 coming in here. Let's see what that was. Oh, USGS reporting this to 5.2. Uh, just outside of the Manila area, Philippines region, 108 kilometers deep. Uh, a little bit of further movement up north here on the northwestern edge here of this plate boundary. And, uh, you can see kind of in all areas kind of covering the Philippine plate here. Mostly smaller microquake activity for now, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. Looks like another 4.4 coming into the uh, this area down here. All right, up north into the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Um, let's see here. I know we had a recent earthquake up here. Looks like this 4.3, fairly recent from uh, oh, a couple hours ago, it looks like. Extreme northern edge of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Aside from that, some older movement activity from yesterday. I think I need to adjust that time frame just slightly there uh, to cover the last 24 hours. Somewhere around there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, 4.3, the latest in this region of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench up into the Alaska area. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of movement kicking up here. Most of this from yesterday, I believe. Uh, some threes kicking off here across the Aleutian Trench. All right, down into the Hawaii area. Looks much calmer today, although not completely quiet. Still seeing a little swarming around the Kilauea Volcano area in a uh, migration fashion here. The magnitudes, uh, nothing major, but the depth of these earthquakes here, roughly between one and 1.5 kilometers below the surface. Let's see if they put out a notification here yet in the update of the Kilauea volcano. Here's the Kilauea daily update put out this morning. Uh, currently not erupting, no active lava uh, has been observed. Uh, 
which is no telling how long that's going to last, but I, I think things will be remaining quiet for a little bit. Uh, but it's definitely noteworthy to watch with all this movement below the surface here lately. I want to show you guys the last 30 days of activity. Then we'll read the rest of that update. <clears throat> See, this is specifically right around uh, the Kilauea volcano area, last 30 days. And that's quite a bit of movement here for, um, you know, obviously an active volcano, but one that's not erupting. We did see some deeper movement quakes here below the surface, indicating uh, potential magma on the move or on the rise uh, below the Kilauea volcano. So that's kind of why I'm thinking that this will probably stir back up here uh, soon. Just don't know exactly when. Continue to watch that. These earthquake uh, swarms do tend to point towards a little bit of uh, of potential eruption. Uh, looks like the tilt meter has tracked gradually inflationary tilt for the past week, meaning that um, swelling, so to speak, inflationary. Uh, small flurries of earthquakes have occurred. Um, looks like obviously below the crater. No unusual activity been noted across the east rift zone or the southwest rift zone either. So, or either, either. Steady rates of ground deformation and seismicity continue along both. So that just tells me right there, things are um, stirring up below the surface. All right, we'll continue to watch that. See uh, when the next eruption will be here. All right, uh, let's see, further to the west here, we did have, uh, this, I think this is from yesterday, 5.0 into the mid-Indian Ridge. Up around Nepal, did see a little activity yesterday as well with a 5.2. Looks like all this movement here from yesterday. Uh, look at the Earthquake 3D globe here. This is kind of our quiet zone today. Not a whole lot of newer movement taking place here uh, across this area. Most of the... Uh, active regions been down into the indonesia area and also over here into uh obviously the fiji area and the vanuatu region now what's this 5.4 here doing way off the plate boundary see this one right here let's see what we got i don't know if that's going to be a legit earthquake or not but it's looks like it's centered up here somewhere north of uh, samoa 5.4 Let's take a little visual here. See, now this is being reported by the GeoNet servers. So no guarantee if this is actually a legit earthquake or not. All right, we'll just keep an eye on it and uh, adjust accordingly if I need to. So I think with this swarming down here in Southern Cal, definitely have to watch that. Uh, I do have a station pulled up in Barrett down there in Southern Cal. It's kind of monitoring some uh, earthquake activity as we speak. It looks like maybe a uh, little earthquake coming into the Japan region right now. Uh, let's see what we have. Nothing showing up on the USGS map here. Again, it's just coming in. Doesn't look like it's too big. Uh, some smaller activity may be ramping up here across the Japan area. Either way, we'll keep an eye on movement here today. Space weather activity. See what we got going on here. We did have a... Uh, let's see, when was this put out? Yesterday we had a low-grade M flare. Looks like overnight mostly C flare activity, but it is popping. Kind of getting crackling here a little bit. Uh, elevated activity across the uh, current disk of the sun. Let's see what we have. Goodness. So this sunspot down here that's been growing here over the past day or two uh, continues to show growth here within this uh, sunspot area and that is currently still facing the earth. It looks fairly active. That's why we're seeing the elevated activity on the solar flare chart. Uh, so if this were to blast off anything any major CME, it would definitely be Earth-directed. 
and geo effective in the days to come but right now um, I think if it's going to do it it should probably do it here soon uh, look at the UV filter rays here it does show a little bit of flaring currently taking place from this area uh, so we'll watch this sunspot that's currently facing the earth it looks like 85% chance for a C flare M flare elevated to 25% chance and uh, X flare down at 1 As far as any other sunspots, aside from uh, 3288, uh, looks as though I get the most re recent image here. Kind of looks like this one up here is gaining a little bit more tightness and a little bit more complex structure within this sunspot region. That's going to be uh, 3289. Uh, so we'll watch that as it gets uh, a little bit better into position. But right now our main threat is going to be this area down here. Uh, with that closeness and the pol polarity of the fields. The magnetic structure looks fairly complex. Looks pretty awesome though, I would say. We'll just watch that for uh, some potential flaring, or directed. All right, uh, space weather act or uh, weather activity, I should say, severe weather. Uh, looks like gonna cover a good portion of Texas today, San Antonio, Austin, Fort Worth, Arlington area, in a uh, slight Let's go back here. Uh, enhanced area, excuse me. The slight area covers a much broader region. Um, good portion of Texas out there looking at some severe weather today. 5% chance it looks like around the Waco area. Uh, Copper's Cove, Cleburne. Main threat today is going to be some large hail again. But uh, seeing that here lately, that stuff can do some damage. Uh, but the hatched area is going to include areas around San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, Arlington, with a 10% or greater probability of 2-inch diameter hail or larger within 25 miles of a point. So if you get these thunderstorms popping up and uh, they're headed your way, there's a good chance that that could hold together and uh, send some pretty large hail down. Uh, tomorrow, that activity will shift much further east, giving Texas a little break there from the severe weather. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here, have a good one, and uh, we will catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight. It's supposed to be uh, 97 degrees here. It's already 82 outside here, and it's not even noon yet here in Northern California, so it's going to be a warm one. I don't think I'm going to try to get any yard work done today. I think I'm going to make it a pool day. It's Friday. Uh, good day to lounge out in the pool and just, uh, you know, enjoy the uh, enjoy the weather, so to speak. What do we got? 1.8 New Zealand. Let's see here. 4.4. All right, guys. Um, have a good one. We'll catch you back a little bit later on tonight. Take care.